Srimad Bhagavatam Translated with commentaries by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada Canto 1 Chapter 8 Prayers by Queen Kunti and Parikshit Save Text 8 As soon as he seated himself on the chariot to start for Dwarka, he saw Uttara hurrying toward him in fear. All members of the family of the Pandavas were completely dependent on the protection of the Lord, and therefore the Lord also protected all of them in all circumstances. The Lord protects everyone, but one who depends completely upon him is especially looked after by the Lord. The father is more attentive to the little son who is exclusively dependent on the father. Text 9 Uttara said, O Lord of Lords, Lord of the Universe, you are the greatest of the mystics. Please protect me, for there is no one else who can save me from the clutches of death in this world of duality. Purport this material world is the world of duality in contrast with the oneness of the absolute realm. The world of duality is composed of matter and spirit, whereas the absolute world is complete spirit, without any tinge of the material qualities. In the dual world, everyone is falsely trying to become the master of the world, Whereas in the Absolute World, the Lord is the Absolute Lord. And all others are His Absolute Servitors. In the world of duality, everyone is envious of all others, and death is inevitable due to the dual existence of matter and spirit. The Lord is the only shelter of fearlessness for the surrendered soul. No one can save himself from the cruel hands of death in the material world without having surrendered himself at the lotus feet of the Lord. Text 10 O oh my Lord, you are all-powerful. A fiery iron arrow is coming towards me fast. My Lord, let it burn me personally if you desire, but please, do not let it burn and abort my embryo. Please, do me this favor, O oh my Lord. Purport This incident took place after the death of Abhimanyu, the husband of Uttara. As the widow of Abhimanyu, she should have followed the path of her husband, but because she was pregnant and Maharaj Parikshit, a great devotee of the Lord, was lying in embryo, she was responsible for his protection. The mother of a child has a great responsibility in giving all protection to the child, and therefore she was not ashamed to express this frankly before Lord Krishna. Uttara was the daughter of a great king, the wife of a great hero, and student of a great devotee, and later she was the mother of a good king also. She was fortunate in every respect. Text 11 Sutta Goswami said, Lord Sri Krishna, who was always very much affectionate to his devotees, having patiently heard her words, could at once understand that Aswatthama, the son of Dronacharya, had thrown the Brahmastra to finish the last life in the Pandava family. Purport. The Lord is impartial in every respect, but still he is inclined towards his devotees because there is a great necessity for this for everyone's well-being. The Pandava family is a family of devotees and therefore the Lord wanted them to rule the world. That was the reason that he vanquished the rule of the company of Duryodhan and established the rule of Maharaj Yudhisthira. Therefore, 
He wanted to protect Maharaj Pariksit also, who was lying in embryo. He did not like the idea that the world should be without the Pandavas, the ideal family of devotees. Text 12 O foremost amongst the great thinkers, Munis, Shanaka, Seeing the glaring Brahmastra proceeding towards them, the Pandavas took up their five respective weapons. Purport The Brahmastras are finer than the nuclear weapons. Asvatthama discharged the Brahmastras simply to kill the Pandavas, namely the five brothers headed by Maharaj Yudhisthira and their only grandson lying within the womb of Uttara. Therefore, the Brahmastra, more effective and finer than the atomic weapons, was not as blind as the atomic bombs. When the atomic bombs are discharged, they do not discriminate between the target and others. Mainly, the atomic bombs do harm to the innocent because there is no control. The Brahmastra is not like that. It marks out the target and proceeds accordingly, without harming the innocent. Text 13 The Almighty Personality of Godhead Sri Krishna, having observed that a great danger was befalling his unalloyed devotees, who were fully surrendered souls, at once took up his Sudarshan disc in order to protect them. Purport The Brahmastra, or the supreme weapon released by Asvatthama, was something similar to the nuclear weapon, but with more radiation and heat. This Brahmastra is the product of a more subtle science, being the product of a finer sound or mantra recorded in the Vedas. Another advantage of this weapon is that it is not blind like the nuclear weapon because it can be directed only to the target and nothing else. Asvatthama released the weapon just to finish all the male members of Pandu's family. Therefore, in one sense, it was more dangerous than the atomic bombs because it could penetrate even the most protected place and would never miss the target. Knowing all this, Lord Sri Krishna took up at once his personal weapon to protect his devotees who did not know anyone other than Krishna. In the Bhagavad Gita, the Lord has clearly promised that his devotees are never to be vanquished, and he behaves according to the quality or degree of the devotional service by the devotees. Here the word Ananya Visayatmanam is significant. The Pandavas were cent percent dependent on the protection of the Lord, although they were all great warriors themselves. But the Lord neglects even the greatest warrior and also vanquishes them in no time. When the Lord saw that there was no time for the Pandavas to counteract the Brahmastra of Asvatthama, he took up the weapon even at the risk of breaking his own vow. Although the battle of Kurikshetra was almost finished, still, according to his vow, he should not have taken up his own weapon. But the emergency was more important than the vow. He is better known as the Bhaktivatsal, or the lover of his devotee, and thus he preferred to continue as Bhaktivatsal than to be a worldly moralist who never breaks his solemn vow. Text 14 The Lord of Supreme Mysticism, Sri Krishna, resides within everyone's heart as the Paramatma, and as such, just to protect the progeny of the Kuru dynasty, he covered the embryo of Uttara by his personal energy. Purport The Lord of Supreme Mysticism can simultaneously reside within everyone's heart, or even within the atoms, by his Paramatma feature, his plenary portion. Therefore, from within the body of Uttara, 
he covered the embryo to save Maharaj Parikshit and protect the progeny of Maharaj Kuru, in which King Pandu was also a descendant. Both the sons of Dhritarashtra and those of Pandu all belonged to the same dynasty of Maharaj Kuru. Therefore, both of them were generally known as Kurus. But particularly, when there were differences between the two brothers' families, the sons of Dhritarashtra were known as Kurus, while the sons of Pandu were known as Pandavas. Since the sons and grandsons of Dhritarashtra were all killed in the Battle of Kurukshetra, the last son of the dynasty is thus designated as the son of the Kurus. Text 15 Oshanika, although the supreme Brahmastra weapon released by Asvatama was irresistible and without check or counteraction, when confronted by the strength of Vishnu, Lord Krishna, it was neutralized and foiled. Purport In the Bhagavad Gita it is said that the Brahmajyoti, or the glowing effulgence transcendental, is resting on Lord Sri Krishna. In other words, the glowing effulgence known as Brahmatejas is nothing but the rays of the Lord, just as the sun rays are rays of the sun disk. So this Brahma weapon also, although materially irresistible, could not surpass the supreme strength of the Lord. The weapon called Ramasiras, released by Asvatthama, was neutralized and foiled by Lord Sri Krishna by his own energy. That is to say, he did not wait for any other's help because he is absolute. Text 16 O Brahmins, do not think this to be especially wonderful in the activities of the mysterious and infallible personality of Godhead. It is so because he, by his own transcendental energy, maintains and annihilates all material things, although he himself is unborn. Purport. The activities of the Lord are always inconceivable to the tiny brain of the living entities. Nothing is impossible for the Supreme Lord. But all his actions are wonderful for us, and thus he is always beyond the range of our conceivable limits. The Lord is the all-powerful, all-perfect personality of Godhead. The Lord is cent percent perfect, whereas others, namely Brahma, Narayan, Shiva, the demigods, and all other living beings, possess only different percentages of such perfection. No one is equal to or greater than him. He is unrivaled. 